All right, guys, what's up? Uh, we're starting a new series here with Big Techs, and we're going to start focusing on getting big because it's the winter season. As you can see, <laughs> I'm bundled up as fuck. I'm wearing <laughs> jeans. I fucking hate jeans. They're so uncomfortable, but it's cold here in Austin. It is 60 degrees, and I am dying, and it's only going to get colder. So the fact that you're bundled up, hey, man, you don't have to be as ripped, you know? So... That's the perfect time to try and add some size. Uh, you know, if you're a powerlifter, most of the big meets for the year are kind of over. Uh, so it's, you know, plenty of time to either move up a weight class or to just take a little break from trying to stay in your weight class uh, for the next season. And for bodybuilding, the same. You know, you've got maybe another month, maybe tops uh, left in the competitive season. But other than that, you're, you're pretty much done until, until the summer. So now is the time to start making those off-season gains. And we, all three of us, want to take opportunity, want to take advantage of that opportunity. Now, there's three of us here because we're all coming from kind of different backgrounds. And we want to give you guys a little bit of diversity in our experiences. So, obviously, I'm focusing on the powerlifting aspect of things. I'm gearing up for two big meets next year. I had the Tribute in August, the USPA Tribute, and then I had the WRPF uh, meet the current Open. So, those are my two big meets. That one's at the end of April. Uh, I'm really excited with those. I want to do my absolute best, and so I'm trying to take advantage of this break right now to make sure that I'm 100% prepared. Rob, I'm going to let Rob and Kyle talk about their own goals. You want to go first? No, me too. <laughs> All right, my goals are pretty simple. Um, I always try to bulk uh, pretty much because, for me, it's it's not so much about competitions or being a competitor. It's just about I've always wanted to be bigger. Been, there's no size yet that I've reached that I've been like, okay, this is big enough. I never felt like that, you know. Um, so for me, it's always about trying to reach that next number up there and uh, basically grow. But at the same time, growing lean still, you know, uh, I'm all about growing lean. I'm not about getting fat. You know, there's a difference between bulking season and just because it's winter and all that kind of stuff. I'm still not going to let my gut overhang my, my pants, but... You know, I agree. This is the time where we can let loose a little bit. And that's the only way I believe that you're truly going to gain any kind of weight. You have to give up some of that. Because if you can't feel comfortable with a little bit of extra fluff, then you're never going to gain weight. It's not going to prime the body. You won't be anabolic. You'll be catabolic. So. Right. But you're really coming at things from the bodybuilding side of the equation, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. For me, it's the bodybuilding side of things, 100%. Um, and so from the way I do it is I try to symmetrically gain as much weight as I can, keeping, like I said, lean. Um, I do kind of a power building style, you know, but more bodybuilding, obviously, you know, 10 sets of most of what I do and stuff like that, 12, 15 reps, those kind of things. Um, that's it. Yeah. Um, so I, my background, if you don't know who I am, I stand behind the camera for, for both these guys. Um, so I'm kind of your average person. I'm, I'm probably someone that y'all can more equate to a little bit better. Uh, these guys are both elite people. So. Um, a little bit about my background, I came from um, sports, so I was always training for football. So I have some training knowledge, but when it comes to bulking, um, it's something I've always been kind of terrified to do. So after I quit football, I was a little over 300 pounds, I think 317 at my heaviest. So I was on a permacut perma, perma uh, portion of my life, <laughs> and, and I think I really fucked up my metabolism for a while and just been kind of scared to do a proper bulk. So. Um, I kind of lean on these guys for six weeks. I'm going to follow Ben's group coaching program to kind of get me back on that track and, um, and really kind of do this a, a much better way. So when I do start to cut back down, I at least have some better, uh, better foundation to build upon than I did beforehand because I definitely had a lot of kind of lopsided muscles or, or things just didn't quite look right. I had broad shoulders, but I still just looked like a shrimp. Um, so, so now it's kind of my time to try to build something, a better physique with, uh, with proper kind of guidance and um, kind of a better knowledge going into this and, and not being afraid to uh, put on a little bit of fluff if it's doing the right thing in the long run. And so what I really want to focus on, though, is something that you mentioned about how, you know, it's kind of intimidating to say that, okay, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and bulk up and get, try and gain some mass. Because nobody really wants to get fat, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> you want to get fat, not that hard. Like, let's go out to McDonald's every meal, supersize me, and, yep. and you can get fat really easily. And because it is so easy to get fat, especially with the food choices that we have in, in just the modern world, I think it can be intimidating to say I'm intentionally going to try and get bigger, but hey, I want this to be good size. I want it to be muscle and, you know, not get this, this big gut that, that Rob talked about. 
And especially if you've been coming from the side where you've been diving for a long time, it can be really, really difficult, like you said. Yeah. Um, for the one thing you really, you really, really can fuck your metabolism if you're not dieting properly. And to be totally honest with you, I feel like I did that to a large degree when I was trying to stay 181 for so mm -hmm. long. Uh, between, you know, I started dieting in around March when I started my prep one month out from the U.S. Open this year and really didn't stop until recently. And when I did that, I had to reach out to my own, my current diet coach, Justin Harris, because man, I just felt overwhelmed. It was like, I'm eating a quarter of what I was eating this time a year ago, and I don't know how to get back there. Yeah. And I feel miserable, and I've lost all this size, and I just feel overwhelmed. The problem is that, in my opinion, the reverse dieting kind of fad type deal where you're adding just a few calories every week or even every two weeks or whatever, trying to rev your meta metabolism up that way, it's not going to work. Uh, like, because how long are you going to be bulking for? Unless you're going to be doing this for the next five years, if you're adding five calories a week. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. So, you know, Justin was real upfront with me. He's like, look, we're going to turn you into a clean food processing machine yeah. because the more clean food you can eat without getting fat, then the more likely when your body is ready to build muscle that it's going to have the nutrients that it needs to do that. Yeah. Um, because if you guys don't know, when your body does build muscle, it's not something that happens. It's uh, very sporadic, right? So a muscle building activity is not something that lasts for a long period of time. But when your body is primed to grow, if it doesn't have the nutrients available, that opportunity is just wasted. And so that's why it's important to make sure that you do have this almost constant stream of nutrients, even if your body isn't always using that to build muscle, you can be using it for other metabolic functions as well. So that's why the goal is really to be able to eat as much as you possibly can, not as little as you possibly right. can and still gain. Um, and you touched on that too. So I want to talk, maybe each of us can go through our individual strategies about how we, we try to do that. And I know we've talked a little bit already. Do you want to expand on that at all? About how you try to eat more without getting fat? Yeah, so like you said, I mean, you pretty much said it, uh, clean food. You know, that's really, it's food choices. Um, I do believe that you have to have a dense calorie foods, you know, um, something that has that, you know, heavier calorie, I guess you could say, base with the food, but at the same time, it's clean foods, you right. know? It's higher in fats, but it's like fish, right. you know, avocado, things like that, that I would go for as far as choices instead of McDonald's or any of those kind of choices, Taco Bell, you know, <laughs> the obvious bad signs. Um, and maybe be, I go like less lean meats, you know, instead of like a New York strip that has almost no fat in it, I would go for a ribeye. And I can't say that that's healthy fats, but, you know, I'm still getting a high protein content. It helps my hormone levels stay balanced and stuff like that, I believe, anyways. Um, tons and tons of vegetables, personally, is the way I have to do it to keep things going the way it's supposed to be going. Because the hardest thing for me when I'm gaining weight is always being full. And I believe a lot of people don't realize you try to eat all this meat, try to eat all these carbs, and you're like, oh, I'm too full for the vegetables. Well, that's why you're too fucking full. You know, yes. eat the vegetables, eat yeah. the other stuff, blend it up if you have to. You have to get that fiber in there. You have to get that basically because if you don't, you're going to go nowhere with it very fast. And your body, it just, it helps the body. I feel like metabolize those foods better too, you know. Uh, so. The problem with that, I think, is it's so simple. But some people just don't have the willpower, man. They just want to eat shit. And, you know, that's. <laughs> There's a balance to be had, but true. at the end of the day, it honest to God really is that simple. If you can eat clean, you're not going to get fat. Yeah. You're right. Willpower, discipline, it's hard. Oh, I mean, yeah. I know I know you battle it every oh, single day. Yeah. People think sometimes because I, I've, I've seen videos and lots of comments where you're like, oh, you're already there. You don't have a hard time doing this. You don't have a hard, you're not a hard game. You're 300 pounds. Guess right? what? I am a hard game. Yeah. <laughs> I fight this battle every day. To the point to where I feel mentally beaten sometimes, mm -hmm. just trying to force myself to go in a direction that you don't want to go. It's yeah. so much easier to do what everybody else does and look like everybody else, but that's a battle, man. It's it's a lot harder than people realize, but it actually is doable for everybody. That's what's ridiculous, you know. Discipline. So, so one question for y'all, I think, and something that I I do as as a kind of creative person, as I spend a lot of time behind a computer editing, or I'm not shooting. So finding time to kind of fit in meals, especially if you're trying to really up those calories, is, 
do you have any tips that people can take with them that are going to help them get more of those calories in? Do you believe in, in mass repla or meal replacement shakes or, or adding some, uh, I guess you use avocados or higher dense calories, olive oil or things like that? Is that something that people can, can do for, for more calories or do you have better tips that people can um, kind of take with them? You want to take it? Yeah, sure. I, well, I, I think you touched on a lot of this already. One is that vegetable intake, right? The more fiber that you're getting through those vegetables, the quicker your digestive system can be able to process that food. I think you can add a good digestive enzyme on top of that. I like Digest Gold. It's the one that I use, especially after heavier meals. Uh, and that, that absolutely will help to be able, you'll be able to eat more often. We also touched on our, in our last diet video, we touched on using peptides to increase that hunger. So we don't have to revisit that. I'll just link to that video below in case you guys would like to know more about that particular area. Um, there are other substances that people have been known to, <laughs> to use to induce the munchies. And I think those can be actually really helpful if you're trying to gain weight, as long as it then doesn't get to your ability to uh, stick to clean foods, right? Like, let's be real. If you're gonna smoke and then you're just gonna go out and eat a bunch of crap like I don't <laughs> Do know, a cereal made of donuts or something, <laughs> then yeah. yeah, that's that's not that's not good. But if you're using it to, to pound down more clean food, then you know it's, it can be a useful tool in your toolbox. toolbox. Yeah. yeah. What I do it too is like like you were talking about sitting down and you're doing a bunch of stuff and you're working on stuff and you're trying to think of it. So I take my macros that I'm supposed to have during the day. I figure out what those are going to be for the week, right? And then I'll split it up. You know what you're going to have for your protein and stuff like that. I mean, that's what's going to be basically synthesizing the muscle mass. So the only thing that's really going to help you gain that weight is going to be the fat of the carbs, in my opinion, okay? So in my opinion, it's like you're going to have to uptake one of them, right, obviously. You know, and you'll uptake both to a certain degree, but you'll pick one more than the other that works with your body best. Some people, it's fats, right? Some people, it's carbs. You know, it's just whatever. Um, I kind of lean towards fats a little bit because I feel like you actually get a cleaner physique on fats mm -hmm. than you would carbs. So carbs are great, but you got to fight that whole insulin thing, and you've got to uh, be super careful with that because with your insulin levels, if you... And I mean, we're going into way, I take too long with the details and stuff of a, like stressing out the enzymes in your blood and stuff like that when you put too much carbs in there. Um, but really trying to make it as short as possible. Um, with the fact, you don't have to worry so much about all that kind of stuff. You can't really worry too much. You can stay anabolic. You can do something, like I said earlier, avocado. Right. Add it with every meal. Boom. There's a shit ton of fat. Right. You know what I mean? And it's just like right there. It's so much easier. Eat your normal meal. Eat your normal size. Add avocado to it. And then you've got a lot more fats than you would have had, and you'll gain weight like that. Right. You know? Um, I 100% agree with Rob, except personally, I respond better to carbs, just like he mentioned. This is going to be very individual, depending on your body. Um, I've always responded better to carbs. One of the reasons that I am working with Justin is because he's one of the masters of carb cycling, which is the approach that I use. And it also goes back to Kyle's point about how to eat more. So in a carb cycling approach, you're not eating as much in your off days, which makes it it's nice because you have that mental break. You don't have to feel stuffed all the time. But then in your training days, you're really trying to pound down the food. And if you're training appropriately, then generally you're going to have a pretty darn good appetite after you train. So that can make it really, really e it can make it easier to get some of those good calories in. Now there are issues with carb cycling, like Rob mentioned, insulin sensitivity is one of them. Um, Justin and I are using glucose disposal agents to help mitigate that factor, um, but you can have huge differences in the in the calorie intake from day to day. So just to give you guys kind of an example, uh, when I was dieting, my lowest uh, food days I would be eating about 1,700 calories a day, felt like death. Uh, mm -hmm. But I would have a carb up day of over 4,000 calories a day, uh, and that you know helped me to at least keep my glycogen stores at a level where I felt like I could perform, not at my best, but at a, an acceptable level. Now that we're trying to gain weight, we've moved those lower calorie days up to 2,500, and my training days will be anywhere from 3,500 to 4,500 calories. So a significant increase in calories. Remember, this is not the reverse dieting stuff, right? That's, I think, a 25% increase in, in daily calories. But... Uh, we still have that big fluctuation from a training day to an off day, which is a nice mental break. It's a good way to keep that insulin sensitivity high. Uh, and for me, it's worked really, really well for a long, long period of time. I also find it's really easy uh, for me. You know, I don't have to count individual macros as much, uh, and I, I can stick to the plan without having to think too hard about it. Yeah. 
So to wrap up this first video, um, do we kind of just want to say what our what our ultimate goal is? If we have a number, a yeah, weight, or something yeah. like that, and just so we can at least have something to hold us accountable. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mine so, on the spot. <laughs> yeah, on the spot. So I'm actually I would like to see 235 to 240 on the scale before I'm done, uh, quote unquote bulking. Um, I'm taking kind of a, a slower approach and. Y'all are probably going to hear that and be like, holy shit, you're moving up to 242. You better watch that. No. Um, I, I'm definitely not going over 198. I'm not necessarily done with 181. Uh, but during the off season, I really think I can take advantage of that time to, to grow, to add some huge strength. Because, uh, honest to God, as much as it sucks, I'm pretty good at dieting. I'm pretty good at cutting water. I'm really good at cutting water. <laughs> so I can weigh 242 and make 198, no problem. I can weigh 242, I can diet down to, you know, 205, to whatever, and make 181. Uh, so that that's my plan. Okay. And then we're doing this in six weeks. Six weeks, yeah. Six weeks. The goal is yeah. to be done by about the rainier game start, right? Yes. So December 22nd is going to be a kind of our last... Maybe end of the year. I mean, yeah, we can go end of the year. It's yeah. bulking, you know. There's yeah, no, exactly. There's, there's no dead set yeah. timeline, but... January sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> January it is then. But okay, yeah, yeah. So uh, my goal is right now I'm sitting at 300, and I am, st I am. I said I'm not really like doing a sport competition, but I am actually competing next year. So I'm setting myself up for that, obviously to get those gains and stuff like that. So I'm sitting at three, and I would in six weeks like to realistically, while keeping my body fat semi low, reach about 330. That's my goal. 330, 335 would be awesome. We'll see what happens. I am a slow gainer, and I realized too that. Once I've hit my number, which is about 300, I'll go five or six pounds up, five or six pounds backwards, five or six pounds up, five or six pounds backwards. It's not, it's the body wants to reject you after you get to a certain size. Man, I'm the does. same way. <laughs> um, and I didn't mention my, so I'm going to bed at 220. I'm waking up anywhere between 205 and 215. My weight fluctuates a lot. And part of that is the carb cycling approach. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm shooting for that 235 to 240 as, as PM weight. I'm giving myself a little. I think 40 pounds <laughs> is <laughs> <laughs> a little too much for me, but uh, I think 10 is, is good. Um, so, I mean, I woke up this morning, I was 244.4, so I'm kind of right about that 245. Um, I think my long term goal is to be about a 250, 260, but a lot leaner than I am, so I think that probably means. At the end of whatever we're going, I think about a 260 would be pretty solid. If not, just doing 255, but almost more of a recomp as, as much as just a pure bulk. Um, because again, I did come from a larger size. I'm a little bit scared to see that number on the scale go up. But if I can do it correctly, I know that it'll benefit me in the long run. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking 10, 10, 15 pounds gain would be pretty solid for me. So, um, I do think that's our goal. So, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So this is the first part of the series. We're going to have maybe weekly, bi-weekly updates. We'll keep you guys informed. We'll touch on some more topics about dieting, about struggles that we come up with, about gaining weight, about training. So hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any suggestions, comments, feedback, whatever, please post them in the comments below. And we'll see you all next time.